Welcome back to my channel, my name's Michael, and I thought to begin my journey into world cinema, I thought I should go over my favourite films as they currently stand. Like, favourite is very subjective. Catch me on another day, this list would be very different. And there are so many great films, it's hard to decide, but currently I've put together a list of five films that I really enjoy and really think represent my interests. So I thought I'd just share them as a starting off point and it gives you a sense of who I am and what I'm interested in. But it also would be interesting to have this documented as I go forward and look at well cinema in greater detail and explore more films. I'd be interested to see how this list may change and how I perceive filmmaking and this the art of telling stories via cinema. So I thought it'd be interesting to start this way because that way we have this here and then we could move on to talk about some more recent films that I've seen and maybe do a best of 2019 video, talk about a film festival I was at recently and all those things. But this just felt like a natural starting off point. And I picked five films, not all of them are foreign language films, but this does give me a sense of who I am and what I like in cinema. So let's start at number five. I went with Cinema Paradiso, which is an Italian film, I believe, came out in 1988. It was written and directed by Giuseppe Tortoturn, and this is a love story to cinema, basically. It follows this Italian director through his life and the impact that cinema has on him and the way it relates to his own life. So we get this story of this fictional director, which I believe is closely reminiscent of the own director's life or some other director's life, I can't remember for sure. But you get to see him grow up and you get to see his love of cinema grow and develop through the ages. And you get to see like that evolution of films as well, which is really interesting, a fascinating movie. And I put this on my list because I like that way of exploring life and the connection to one's passion, their interests. In particular, this is a passion for films. And I think this is an incredible movie, obviously, because it's on this list, but one that I think needed to be on this list because it's slightly older and I do have a big gap in my knowledge of classic cinema. So I kind of think it works as a way to kind of teach me about older films as well as tell a great story. Next is the film The Insult, which I talked about in my last video, the Lebanese film about a Lebanese Christian and a Palestinian and they're kind of at war with each other. It's basically a courtroom drama where the Lebanese Christian has taken this Palestinian man to court over an insult and what plays out is this exploration into these two people and the anger and hostility they have towards each other as well as their past hurt and what hurt was inherited upon them. So looking at the history of the Lebanese people and looking at the history of the Palestinians and all those political and cultural events that have brought pain and anger towards each other and towards a whole race of people. And I really love this movie because of the way it explores that anger and it does so in a way to try and teach the audience and these two people about each other's cultures so you get this exploration into understanding the Lebanese people this and and exploration into trying to understand the Palestinians as well and I think it's a fascinating film I said in my last video that this was written by a husband and wife and they of two different religions as well so they kind of took each other took different sides of it 
and use that to explore this idea of, hey, there's similarities between us and we've both been hurt in the past and let's look at this nationalist idea and this political situation and how that is affecting the other person. So it's definitely one that I really love and definitely one that I will probably talk about again in the future. But it definitely had to be on this list. I think this is the one that really set off everything to explore more world cinema. And I think that it has an important part in my journey. At number three, I put Birdman. This is a American black comedy by a Mexican director, written and directed by Alejandro Inaritu, and I've probably pronounced that wrong, but what I love about this is it's this real surrealist type comedy about storytelling and about theatre, and it kind of mimics the life of Michael Keaton, who plays the main role in this movie. It's The plot of the movie is about this washed up actor who's only known for his one role as a superhero, Birdman, and he's trying to resurrect his career, he's trying to get back into doing theatre that he loves and that excites him. And I really appreciate this film for that. I think Michael Keaton has had an amazing career after Batman. Things were doing pretty well. Obviously, he's always going to be known as Batman. But things did fizzle out. And now that he's trying to make a comeback, I think he's doing some great films. And I'm really excited to see him back in Hollywood making films. And I think this one is just a beautiful representation of what he can do and a fascinating film. This was shot in a way that was meant to make it look like one continuous shot. And I think it's a very interesting technique because we are trying to approach it like we are a documentary crew following this person and trying to get an insight in his life. And it is just really fun to look at the way they pan the camera in order to get a cut in. And I really appreciate that. And I think this is probably a director that I'm going to love. He did win the Oscar for this film. And then he won the Oscar again for The Revenant with Leonardo DiCaprio. And that was another great film. The cinematography in The Revenant is beautiful. I really love that. And I think I like the storytelling in Birdman better. But I think it really got me to start taking notice of this director and I'm excited to see what he does next. Next, at number two, is Belle de Jour by director Louis Benel. And this is another surrealist type novel. This is about a bored housewife who's not happy with her life and she, she starts taking up this job as a high-class escort. And... This is based on a French novel, which I've also read, which I didn't really enjoy as much as the film. What I loved about the film is the surrealist nature of it. There's a lot of dreamlike sequences. There's a lot of symbolism. And the way the director has told the story about sex work and about a sexual awakening is really interesting because he's he's able to do it without doing any real sex scenes, without doing any nudity or anything like that. It's more about symbolism and motifs and surrealism to tell the story. And I think it's really fascinating to watch a film like this and see all those layers. And it's a film that I'm probably going to watch over and over again just to try and get a better understanding because I think it's a film that's got a lot to say. You could probably continue to study it and continue to try and explore the hidden meanings in it. And I think a, a film like that is always interesting to rewatch because I feel like you can always get something new and interesting out of it. And my number one spot is going to Brick, which is written and directed by Ryan Johnson, who is best known for Knives Out recently and Looper, and he also 
directed one of the Star Wars movies, the one that people don't seem to like, but I quite enjoyed it. I prefer it when he's not having to deal with the franchise, where he's got more free reign. But Brick is definitely my favourite of his. It was the first film he wrote and directed, I believe, and it stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who is a, an amazing actor. I really love what he does, what, and I feel like I like the integrity he has where he picks and chooses the roles he wants to take. I like that he will come out and say, look, I did this film, but I don't really stand by it anymore when he's talking about 500 Days of Summer. And I think watching the growth of him as an actor has been really interesting because he was a child actor. And just seeing that growth has been amazing to watch. Brick is this neo-noir type film. I love hard-boiled and noir fiction. I love film noir. I love that dark, gritty, detective-type cinema and literature. So this, I really was drawn to. It is like taking that trope of a hard-boiled detective and putting him into a high school setting, which I found really interesting because we could have this gritty story about high school and we've got this angst that comes from this hard-boiled storytelling, which I really think works really well in this. And I really appreciate the way that Ryan Johnson was able to pull this off. My only problem with this film is that it's really difficult to get a hold of. I would love to get a digital copy of this film, so I had a always available to watch on my Apple TV or on my iPad or something. But it's never available. I don't know if you can get it on Blu-ray or if you can, it's probably very difficult to get. So that is definitely a problem. I hope they redistribute it because I think Ryan Johnson is starting to really make a name for himself. Looper was a great movie. Then he had the Star Wars one, which really sprung him into the spotlight. But Knives Out, which I saw recently, was fantastic as well. And I think it's going to cement him in the spotlight for a little bit. So people will be able to come to this director and see what he does and appreciate his work. And I'm really hoping that that might mean that some of his older stuff will start getting distributed so I can get a copy of Brick. So I always got it on hand. But I think this is his best work. It's the first one, so I don't know what that means for his career, but I think he's got great things ahead for him. So there are the five movies that I wanted to highlight. On any other day, I might have other films. I have a link to my letterbox in the description below, so if you want to follow me on letterbox, this is a, like, a way to track your film watching. And I've started some lists on Letterbox that I'm hoping to take advantage of. One on classic foreign films and one on, on contemporary foreign films. And just putting the films that I watch in there and just trying to build some lists of what I think are my favourites and like rank the movies that I've seen. So if you look at it now, there's not that many on these lists, but I'm hoping this will grow really quickly. And... I can come back later and go, look, I've got a full list of a hundred of my favourite classic foreign films. Let's go through that list or contemporary films or something like that. I think it'll be interesting to see how that grows. And if you're interested, all my other links to social media are in the description below as well. Feel free to follow me and have a chat about some of your favourite films. Some films that you would recommend based on what I have mentioned here. And as always, thank you for watching. Goodbye.